I'm going to uh, just just talk about something real, real quick. It's a little bit off subject. And, and like I told you guys, we want to be a church that does our research. We don't want to just parent Christian television and the Christian radio and all that. So I want you to turn with me real quick. And I'll, I'll get through this real quick because it's not going to be my sermon. To Revelation 21, verse 2. And there's one thing, you know, everybody's got their pet peeves. You know, like I, I, I told you, I, it's hard for me to preach with the blind crooked. And it's hard for me to, uh, you know, preach with my door open and all that. Uh, even though people can be tap dancing, dancing, jumping around, whatever. It don't bother me, but I just, you know, just everybody's got their pet peeve. And my pet peeve is when people say, we're the bride of Christ. Yeah, Revelation 21 is almost the last of the book. Revelation 22 is the last chapter, but it's not too long. And it's just kind of a pet peeve, and I don't want to get started people saying it here. I think somebody said it the other day, and I said, no, no. I can't remember who did it, and I'm not trying to fuss at nobody. If you said it, don't be embarrassed, because I don't even remember you, who said it. But we're not the bride of Christ. I, mean, I don't know why men want to be called the bride of Christ all the time anyway. But we're not the bride of Christ. The Bible does not say anywhere that we're the bride of Christ. Nowhere, nowhere. And I want to prove that. I want to prove to you what the bride is. Now, Paul said he wants to present us as a, a, a chaste version uh, to Christ, but it still didn't call us a bride. He just, he just meant it. He wants us to be pure when we meet Christ. That's his you know, metaphor. And they talk about the, the virgins and the lamps and all that. Still, we're not the bride of Christ. I've got a strong. So I brought it with me. This is my personal strong. So I risk forgetting and leaving it here and leaving it at home and it being here. Just in case anybody don't believe me, you can get your Bible, you get this uh, concordance, and you look up everywhere it says bride, and when you not find it one time, calling us the bride of Christ. But I will show you what it does call the bride of Christ. All right, Revelation 21, verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned her husband. <coughs> as a bride Going to her husband. Okay. It didn't necessarily call it a bride, though, did it? It said as a bride. But go on to verse 9. And there came unto me out of the seven angels who had seven vials for seven last plagues and talked to me, saying, Come hither. I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. So, what is the lamb, the bride of Christ? Is the lamb's wife the bride? I went, okay. Verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit in the great high mountain that showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven of God. So he just told you right there what the bride of Christ is. It's heaven. It's a new Jerusalem. It's a holy city. Uh, Revelation 22, flip over a page. Verse 17, it says, And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that hear say, Come. And let him that thirsty come. And whoever will, let him take the water of life. Freely, so that right there, I just proved to you 100%. And I've got a strong right here. You can look up everywhere it says bride, bridegroom, anything to a bride. We're not the bride of Christ. So anytime you hear anybody say that on Christian radio, Christian TV, and everything, they've not done their research. Now, I think I've said it a few times. I never like saying this. Man, I don't like calling this bride of Christ. I don't like being called a bride, me a man. But when I discovered that, that's what teachers are for, good teachers <laughs> for. Is to reveal things to you like that. And I heard a good teacher that I like to listen to say one time, he was on, the, he got invited to do a Christian TV show, and he said, Look, we're not the bride of Christ. And he proved it. And then I said, That don't sound right to me. I'm going to prove him wrong. And I've tried to prove him wrong, and I couldn't. And I said, Hmm, he's right. So there we go. But now I want to preach on this morning. If you tell me to James chapter 3, and like I said earlier before uh, we started, this is a message for everybody. It's for me. I don't want to start naming names, but it's for everybody in here. Everybody that's understand my voice. You old people, you young people, uh, anybody can understand, uh, needs this message this morning. And it's, it's nothing I've not preached about before, and it's about the tongue. And, uh, uh, and it probably wouldn't hurt us to hear a lot more messages about the tongue. The Bible talks about it a lot. Uh, you can tame every animal on this planet has been tamed. Uh, you can tame a grizzly bear. You can watch TV shows where people, are, where, you know, they make movies with tame grizzly bears. You can tame them. You can tame a lion. You can tame a tiger. Uh, you can tame, a, a, you know, they uh, probably tame a shark and everything. I think every animal out there somehow or another has been tamed uh, one way or another. 
But there's one thing that's the hardest thing to tame on this planet, on this earth. The Bible says, and that is your tongue. And uh, I want to get into that this morning because uh, being a Christian, we can get in the most trouble with this right here, with our tongue. It's it, it's 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 harder to just go out and sin with our body when you're a Christian and you're going to church a lot, you're reading the Bible, you're praying a lot, but that mouth, man, and you, it, 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 it's like it can start a fire. You know, like to get the fires in Gatlinburg. It seems like somebody will, will make a little, have a little cookout or something and a little leaf catch on fire. And as you know, the whole half of Smoky Mountain's caught on fire. That's the way your mouth is. You just start opening, running your mouth, and then here comes just a trouble starting, trouble starting, trouble starting. And I've even learned some new stuff this week, studying on this and, and, and experienced some things, you know, the, uh, that, uh, I'm like, wow, man, you know, I've read James chapter 3, uh, no telling how many times, uh, uh, and i still catching stuff out of it. And if I read it every day for the rest of my life, I'd probably still be catching stuff. That's why the Bible is written by the Holy Spirit, not man, because it's just every time you read it, you can get something new and fresh out of it. But uh, if you, verse 1 says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive greater condemnation. And masters is more or less means teachers, you know. Uh, by the way, uh, Bible tells not everybody's supposed to be a teacher. I never did like it when when a uh, uh, church I used to go to, uh, they, they put a kid in every classroom on a youth day to teach. And everybody. I was like, you don't need kids up there teaching adults the Bible. The kids don't know the Bible. A six-year-old does not know how to teach Revelation 10 or whatever their own. I said, the Bible says not everybody be masters. Uh, uh, every church probably only have a very small handful of teachers because we're going to be held for a greater condemnation. If you're called to be a teacher, you better be on your ball. You better be studying. You better be a studying hard because uh, you're going to be held accountable for everything you say. Uh, you can teach something wrong and absolutely destroy a person's faith. You can teach something wrong and absolutely uh, uh, destroy the work of God, the movement of God, the gospel of God. For example, a lot of preachers are teaching them now that it's okay to run off, with, uh, leave your wife, run off another woman, and then go start a church somewhere. Now, how many followers, you know? And that's that's uh, that takes a lot of stuff that's not in the Bible. And they've heard it on the internet or they read it on the internet or something. That's what they teach instead of uh, teaching out the, the scriptures. And it said, verse 2. For many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. And they will also to bridle his whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. So it's, it's uh, the, 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 the bit, like, you know, anybody has anything to do with horses, you know. That a horse can be wild, you know, but you can train a horse. And, and, and just a, a little bit can, can, in its mouth, a little thing you put in its mouth can control its whole body. And you, if you just train good, you can just barely move your hand. Dad's had them good before we, uh, before we run them. <laughs> you know, we get, Dad go find a good one, we get it, and uh, it, it'd be trained better than we are. And he'd be going, what's these guys trying to do with me? That I don't understand these signals they're giving me. But that's how before you just move your hand, they, they're doing a perfect straight line. You just probably move, and, and they move. Some of them you'd have to turn like a steering wheel and turn. Uh, but, but the bridle turns the whole uh, horse's body. And behold, the ships, which though they be great, and are driven in fierce winds, yet they are turned about a very small hem. Uh, whether so the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a level member and boasteth great things. Behold. How metal, metal, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And uh, all wars you see in the world started with mouths. All fighting, all divorces, all everything usually starts with this right here. And, and somebody asked us to work out, asked Jenny, said, you guys ever fight any? Because we work together. And the temptation's there to argue and fuss and drive all the time. But, we, you know, at work and stuff. But we, we don't get on pretty good. And a waitress is like, do you guys ever fight? And she's like, no, we used to. We really don't now. And she's just blown away by it. She couldn't understand it. She asked, how do you manage that? And Jenny's like, well, we go to church. And, and that's the main part. Or we turn our lives to the God. That's, that's, that's it. That's why we don't fight much. But your relationship in your home life is only as good as the control you have on your big mouth. And if you can't keep your mouth shut, I tell you what, you're going to torture everybody in your house, your husband, your wife, your kids, your relatives, your friends, your family, and it starts that big mouth. It's annoying 
when a family member gets uh, gets on drugs or gets uh, becomes an alcoholic or something, they're all the time trying to hit you up for money or, or taking all your resources away from you because they're hooked. But I tell you what, it's uh, worse is a big mouth all the time. Uh, just all the time, yap, 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 yap. And your relationship and how you get along with people is just as uh, uh, big or as good as the control you have on your lips. And on your mouth. And you young people, uh, you need to hear this. You old people need to hear it too. You get, no, everybody here needs this this morning. We all need to control this right here. And uh, I mean, I told you all I have a problem. I'm going to confess my faults this morning. And the Bible does say faults, not sin. I don't care if it's the 15th word on a strong definition. Faults means faults. It don't mean sin. It means faults. It's almost there. A fault's are almost sin, but not quite. Oversleeping. Sleeping 10 hours a day instead of 8, that's not a sin. That's just a fault. Being late is not a sin. That's just a fault. Okay, there's a difference. But I'll confess my faults. I like, I like to joke around. It's an instinct. And it's hard to control. I do it on impulse without even thinking about it. For example, yesterday I was taking pictures of a, a food at my, my job for the Facebook. And this woman jumped out of the way. And I said, I'm, I'm not getting you in the picture. I said, I don't want to break my camera. And I just said that out of instinct. I, I, it was not something I was thinking. It wasn't something in my heart. It's just a bad habit that God says stuff like that. And Jenny goes, she goes, you might hurt her feelings. said, uh, now you don't say stuff like that. I can't really say that. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. So here I sit for 20 minutes. I couldn't go nowhere. I had to stand there. I had tickets one and out the other. She's busy. And I said, her 20 minutes feeling guilt. Ain't you glad, though, that God had the Holy Spirit convicts us when we do wrong? I don't want to be a Christian out there and just blabber my mouth full speed, a hundred, hundred, you know, miles an hour, and just make a big mess and like these little fires that the Bible talks about. I don't want to be spreading fire, spreading trouble, and, and running my big mouth all the time. So I'm glad the Holy Spirit convicts me. But I told him, woman, I said, listen, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean you was ugly. I, I just, uh, and I'm not, I'm not good with words a lot of time. And I said, I don't care if Pamela Anderson was standing there from the nineties. I would have said the same thing about breaking the camera. And Jenny's like, you still don't know how to apologize. And why'd you uh, compare to Pamela Anderson for us? Well, I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying. I should have said it, and I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, and I, I uh, and I called this. Uh, I was joking with uh, one one lady. I said that we used to call her uh, uh, the Queen of Meth, and I was laughing and joking and stuff. And I started thinking, I think she might have had a drug problem, you know, at one time. I said, I should have said that. I got quit the joking around because that's, you know, we teach that here. There's only church I've ever heard it preached on. Be careful joking around. The Bible warns at it. And uh, when I know I was flying on the helicopter, I felt guilty because I worked for a girl six foot three. And uh, when, I, when uh, I tell the, the Spanish people when we cook for, I say, Eligante wants a hamburger. And because they understand Elegante that means giant, and I felt guilty because I called a girl a giant in Spanish. I'm confessing faults this morning, and that's that's my problem, my instinct, my mouth, my my flame, my fire. So I had to repent for that, and I felt bad. I'm not called her that since, but, but I'm telling you, it's it's a uh, uh, we got to watch our big mouths, our big lips. We can cause a lot of trouble. We can destroy our reputation. We can destroy the image of Christ. We can ruin lives with this thing if we don't watch it. But there's one thing in verse. Uh, Chapter 5, that I've never really noticed before, and people please keen in and listen to me, and, and I hope this comes out right, but it says that the mouth boasteth great things. Think about boasting great things. And I'll use this little example. One time I was working with a lady, and uh, I watched her walk up to the boss, and she goes, ain't nobody stocked up for me. It was at a restaurant. She ain't got the food ready for me this morning. I clocked in this morning, and if they ain't ready for me, Said you need to put a sign up. You have the stuff ready for the next shift. So you do not uh, 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 leave here unless you got everything stocked up, ready for the next shift. So I, and I was like, okay, you know, she just told on a bunch of people. And then I watched her that day leave. And guess what? She didn't do. She didn't stock up nothing for the next shift. I've had people do me that way. Uh, you know, clock in, not be one thing there uh, ready for me, but they'll go tell on me for something, you know. What are you doing when you tell on people and you gossip like that? You're saying, them people do not stock and have stuff ready for me. You know what she's saying? But subliminally, I would do better. I'm better than them. I would stock. I'm better than them. I'm more responsible for my job than they are. Think about this. Oh, Lord, God, help me get this out right. Every time you're gossiping about somebody, look how they're dressed. Can you believe how they're dressed? Look at that. They look silly. You know what you're saying? 
I dress better than that. I dress better than them. I do a better job than that. Look at her house, how messy it is in there. Her floor, uh, you, uh, you, if you swept all that up, put it in a, a, a dustpan, it take four men, pick that dustpan up so much dirt on the floor. You know what you're saying? I'm a better housekeeper than they are. I do a better job. So anytime you're gossiping about some, somebody, most of the time, it's a, it's a weird way of bragging. It's a weird way of saying I'm better than they are. Think about it. That's what the Bible says right here. That word boasting. That's what we're doing when we're gossiping about people. We're boasting and bragging about ourselves. And you got to watch it, man, when people that do that, they're gossiping about people all the time. For well, one, they'll gossip about you once your back's turned, too. But you got to watch that. And I've watched people, bosses and jobs and stuff, you know, they'll, they'll have their little sidekick that's going, got, uh, telling on everybody and, and bragging on herself and telling them on everybody and bragging on herself. And I've never one time, I've watched some people get promoted. I've never one time seen the boss not regret it. That is a red flag when somebody's going to you gossiping about other people. And that's not somebody you want as your sidekick. Because they're gossiping about other people and you know what they're saying. I'm better. I'm better. I'm better. That's true. That's a biblical truth, man. I tell you, the Bible is a powerful, powerful book. It comes straight from God's mouth. I know it's called the book of James, but you might as well call it the book of Holy Ghost from heaven. Uh, uh, James, God used James to have it pinned down. But the Bible we got here, this comes from the Holy Ghost. All right? And then uh, uh, six, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So it's the tongue among our members that it will the whole body and set on fire the course of nature. And it's set on fire of hell. And you talk about, you know, men supposed to be the head of the household. It's just something I, I, want, I want to talk about for a second. But I tell you, if you use your head of the household, you can't control your mouth. And you're all the time cursing your kids and nag nagging at your wife and cussing and going around griping all the time. You're doing a real bad job of running your household. God put you in charge of your house. And he put you in charge of your house to make it torturous, make it miserable on everybody. And your mouth is what's doing that. And it's said right here, set on uh, your mouth's the fire set on the course of hell. And you're making people miserable with your big mouth. Zip it up. Shut it up. For every kind of beast and bird and serpents and things of the sea is tamed and have been, and have been tamed of mankind. You even tame, uh, you go see world down there. And I, and I wonder why they call them killer whales, one of the big giant whales about as big as this building. They've got it trained to do tricks. They've got sea lions trained to do tricks. I've watched elephants paint pictures with their trunks. I'm not kidding. Paint pictures. Uh, man, we've trained animals to do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, but uh, this Tom guy here, that seems to be something that uh, we just don't like to, uh, to tame very well. And we got to watch what we get into, too. We all get real excited and interested in watching people yap their big mouths on TV all the time. We can't wait to see somebody get on there to yap about uh, Democrats or yap about Republicans or yap about this or yap that. We get addicted to just listening to people's big mouths run all day. How about yapping for some peace? How about being some peacemakers? Like Jesus said, when I grew up, people didn't even talk about politics. No, they didn't want to, they wanted to get along with their neighbor. I remember being a little kid, I'll tell you what. Uh, they tell you every secret they have for they tell you who they voted for. You go to the poll. I remember one time my friend, we, we was like little bitty, he was like eight year old, seven, eight year old. And my friend went up and asked this man, who'd you vote, vote for? And his dad grabbed him, he pulled him back, by, tore his shirt off of him and said, you never ask nobody who they vote for. That's private. Uh, you don't want to cause division. You don't want to cause everybody to quarrel and argue. Boy, how things have changed since then. And I, I tell you, our neighbors used to, uh, they'd get together and they do whatever needs to be done in the community. If we need a volunteer fire department, the men of town get together and they try to raise money and give them a fire truck. If we needed a ball field, the men would get together and, and they'd uh, uh, get together and, and do whatever it needs to do and give them a ball field. We once had a community center down there that's a church. Now we, the men would get there and do everything. But now we're too busy fighting over uh, Rachel Maddow and, and Bill O'Reilly and and, that, and Russ Limbaugh, you know, who do you like? Well, I like them. And they're just fighting, 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 fighting. Never no peace, never no joy, never no nothing. It's just yap, 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 grab, grab, grab. And we get into it, we love it, and we follow along with it. We follow that path. Instead of spreading the gospel like we're supposed to, we just follow along setting fires all over this planet. Amen. Yeah, you ain't going to hear this in a lot of places, are you? Thank God for the church is not scared to tell you the truth this morning. 
How about the tongue can no man tame? It is an unruly, really evil, full of deadly poison. Women, you all too. And the Bible said what Proverbs said. Proverbs 21, 9. It's better to dwell in a corner of a housetop than with a brawling woman in a whole house. You know what that's saying? It's better for a man to be sitting on a roof of a house whether the sun's shining on him, burning him up, the ice cold snow, wind, whether it's super hot, super cold, whether it's raining, they'd rather be up there on that roof in a big old wide, nice, beautiful mansion, clean house with all the luxury in it, having to hear nag, 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 mouth, mouth, mouth all the time. I tell you guys, your relationship is only as good as the control of that mouth right here. And Therefore, we bless God, even the Father, and therefore we curse men which are made after the similitude of God. Just real quick. When I had my first son, Chogim, well, Eric, the second, he'll not be caught with me. Uh, I'll tickle him if he says anything about it. He'll not be tickled either. But anyway, when I had him, I remember when I first held him, I started thinking about all these people that I, I, I used to pick on in school. I, I'm not kidding. When I held him, all this stuff come to mind. I start thinking about all the fights I've been in, quarrels I've been in, people I've done wrong, people I disrespect, and I'm like, man, somebody loved that child just like I'm loving this right here, and I don't want nobody to mistreat this kid. I don't want nobody to pick on this kid. I don't want nobody to fight this kid, be ugly this kid like I've done other people. Boy, it changed my life. That one, that day on, I realized, man, we're all loved by somebody or we wouldn't be here. God loves human beings. He made us in our own image. We can't go around cursing them and blessing them. That's not how things work. We got to bless them, and we got to bless them, and we got to bless them. No cursing. We can't curse people. Uh, does a fountain send forth the same place, sweet, water, and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brother, bear olive berries? It refined figs. So can no fountain, both of you, salt water and fresh. So if you're a Christian, you're only supposed to be speaking blessing, good things, not cursing things. You can't go around gossiping and talk about people like a pure dog. You don't know what the people's going through. You don't know what people's been through you, or, or going to go through or whatever. You just got to keep our mouths shut. We're hurt. Christians are destroying our witness out here. We just got into this divisive game. It's trying to get people to heaven. We're trying, busy trying to get people just to join our side of the quarrel. Who is a wise man and dude with knowledge among you? Let him show out of good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. That's something we're supposed to have. Good conversation, meekness, wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above as earthly, sinful, devilish God. God, the Holy Spirit does not have you go around gossiping people like a dog. I've had people with religious spirits. They said, why does God tell me it's wrong for women to wear pants? I said, because you got religious spirit. Spirits talk. It ain't God. It's fleshly. It's sinful. Now, you know, like I said, on the pants thing, there's women pants and men pants. If you give me a pair of pants with flowers and pink and all that stuff, it's not going to look right on me, is it? If you ain't going to find one scripture in the Bible, a woman has to wear a dress. Nowhere. Anywhere. If you look at all the pictures of Bible characters, the men are wearing robes, which is a, yeah. And if you look through history, it's been both ways. There's been cultures where only women wore the pants. But that's just men wear men clothes, women wear women clothes. That's biblical. But it doesn't say anything about pants. And I do, well, I, I, I'm, I'm being a parent, saying something I've said a thousand times, but you have to keep keep it out here. Uh, you wear skinny jeans, tight yoga pants, whatever. Don't tuck your shirts in, please. Uh, pull your shirts out because I don't want men coming in here and have to wrestle with that. Uh, we do need to be modest. That is biblical. But anyway, I'm just saying, the Holy Spirit ain't going around saying, look at her. Look how she dressed. Look at that. Look at him. Look what he's doing. That is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not gossiping to you about other people. And if you think it is, you've got the wrong spirit. Um, um, for where envy and strife is, there's confusion on every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace in them that make peace. And how many people here wants peace? I love peace. And I told you all I called my error, my personal, I 
the perfect era in the last seven years because of our five years, six years, whatever it was. Because it's been a years of peace. I've worked at home. Uh, all the people I've been around is church people. It's been very peaceful now. It's now, I, I said it's the people era. But it, I still have that peace and I have to understand. If I keep my mouth shut, no I aggravate people to death and tell them they're going to break my camera and call them meth heads and everything, then I'm going I'm to be good to go. I'm going to have peace. And don't think the temptation is not there for me to talk about people. Uh, and don't think temptation ain't there for me to go to my boss and say, Look what they did. That ain't no count. Uh, and, and don't think the temptation when somebody's saying uh, uh, something bad about somebody and they're right. Don't think the temptation ain't there for me to agree with them. But if they agree with them, guess what I'm doing? I say, uh huh, I can do better. Uh huh, uh, I agree with you. And if I was given that spot, I'd do better. I said, it's actually what you're doing when you're gossiping and agreeing with people is gossiping. You're saying, I can do better. I'm better than them. That's what the Bible calls envy and boasting. Ain't that powerful? I hope everybody gets that this morning. I hope I ain't messed that one up. Okay, and, and I'll read some uh, scriptures real quick, then, then, then I'll be done. It said, Proverbs 18, 21. It said, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So what you say is one of the most important things that you can ever do is your mouth and what you say. Uh, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So if you cursing and, and grappling and gossiping and and just being a, a, a bad person all the time of your mouth, that's what you're going to reap. A bunch of misery, and no peace, no joy, no nothing. That, that, that you'll reap what you sow. But if you uh, 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 do uh, blessings and, and, and wisdom and, and talk about the gospel and the Bible and everything, you know what you're going to reap? You're going to reap peace. I want peace more than I want trouble. And then uh, 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 Proverbs 20, 19 says, He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. And so uh, that's another problem with uh, uh, the mouth. It's going around telling everybody's business to everybody. Uh, there's some stuff, if you find out, keep to yourself. You don't need to tell everybody. The Bible talks a lot about busy bodies and, and tail bears. And also talks about flattery, too. You be careful and watch people uh, in their flattery. And I watch, ever since I've had this church here, I watch people try to get people to leave. And what they use, one of their tools they use is flattery. Fla oh, oh, you're so pretty. You're so good. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, you dress so You're so good. This, this, this. And the people are like, oh, you know, oh, you preach so good, you talk so good, you sing so good. Why don't you come and join us, okay? <laughs> I'm like, man, don't you care what the Bible says? I mean, I'm kind of trying to teach the Bible here. Uh, well, no, man, it's a, they, they talk real good about me over here. I'm like, we don't talk about you bad here. It's just you're, you're falling to flattery. And the Bible warns us not to uh, fall for flattery. It's a trick of the devil. All right, uh, Proverbs 21, 23. Whosoever keepeth his mouth... And his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. That means if you keep your mouth shut, you're going to have a whole lot less drama in your life. I don't know about you. I don't like drama in my life. I don't like it a bit. I don't like, I don't want none of y'all have drama either because I don't want to deal with it. I want everybody to just be peace and happy. I want everybody to have a joyful marriage. I want everybody to have a joyful relationship with their kids. I want everybody to just be joyful, 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 happy, peaceful, peaceful. Hey, how do you get that? Give it. Keep that mouth shut. Uh, Proverbs 26, 20. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there's no tail bearer, the strife ceases. If there's a bunch of griping and fighting and quarreling on their own, just keep your mouth shut. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to be snuffed out and it's going to go away. And this is uh, uh, James 1, 26. And this last uh, verse I'm reading, this says, if any, man among, if any man among you seem to be religious, I thought Christianity wasn't a religion. Well, the Bible says it is. So another thing, like I said, people do your research. And when people say, well, they say uh, Christianity is a religion. Well, the Bible says it is. And they, right here it does. So remember, we got to be careful what we quote. We don't want to quote TBN preachers. We want to quote the Bible. Because the TBN preachers trust me, get a lot of stuff wrong. If any man among you seems to be religious, and bridle not his tongue, but he but the same of his own heart, the man's religion is in vain. So that Bible's telling you, you're not Christian if you don't keep your mouth shut. If you're going around griping and gossiping and cursing people, man, I believe, I believe in cursing. I believe you could speak something on your kids and absolutely curse them. I believe you could speak something on your wife, grandkids, husband, and absolutely curse them. And I believe if you've done that, you need to repent. Well, I've heard the stories. I don't want to share them. There's a lot of stories I had this morning because, uh, 
I just, just, I just don't feel led to, but there's a lot of stories I've heard just from people being cursed. That's why I don't have nobody saying, I'm mad about me, you're bad to me, because I don't want to be cursed. I fight that stuff. And that used to be a big teaching in, in the Pentecostal movement. Don't curse people. Don't, don't be careful what you say, because the life and death is in the tongue, and it is. And I want to speak life, don't you? I want the world to be a better place because of my mouth, not worse. Better place. Not worse. I hope everybody got something out of this message this morning. And uh, Jenny, go ahead and turn me off. There's something that's, that's on the verge of my tongue, and I keep forgetting about it. I know it's going to come to me. It might come at a weird time. <laughs>